Sick of leaving money on the blackjack table? In this video, we will reveal some advanced strategies developed by artificial intelligence large language models trained data to flip the odds in your favor. Blackjack will never feel the same once you've mastered these keys to earning like a robot. Let's jump right into it. Splitting your cards essentially turns one hand into two, allowing you to double your chances of beating the dealer. But you don't want to split every time, only when the odds are in your favor. Advanced AI analysis of millions of hands revealed the best times to split based on what you're holding and the dealer's up card. Here are some easy-to-remember guidelines. Always split aces and eights. This is a no-brainer since you maximize your chances of getting 21. An ace has a value of either 1 or 11 in blackjack, so when you split a pair of aces, you are essentially trading a hand with a value of either 2 or 12 for two hands that each have a value of 11. Getting a hand with a value of 11 is hugely advantageous, since it gives you the highest odds of hitting 21 on your next card. An 11 has around a 31% chance of turning into 21 with one more card. Similarly, when you split a pair of 8s, you trade a hand of 16 for two hands with a value of 8 each. An 8 is a strong starting hand because it gives you a good chance of hitting 16-21 when you draw another card without much risk of busting by going over 21. So splitting aces and eights breaks one decent hand into two hands that have an excellent chance of turning into very strong totals. It maximizes the probability you'll end up with a hand of 21. Split two tens if the dealer has two to nine, you're highly likely to outdraw a weak dealer up card. Avoid splitting against a 10 or ace though. When you split tens, you are essentially trading a hand of 20 for two hands that have a value of 10 each. A 20 is a strong hand, but not strong enough that you can't potentially improve it by drawing another card. However, there is significant risk of going bust if you draw. By splitting the tens into two tens, you now have two hands that can only be improved without any risk of busting. If the dealer is showing a weak up card like a two to nine, they are likely going to have to draw more cards to try to improve their hand. This means they are more likely to go bust. So by splitting your strong 20, you are putting yourself in a lower risk situation of trying to improve two tens against a dealer who is likely to bust if they have to draw further. This gives you a solid statistical advantage. Split nines against a dealer two to six. The dealer is likely to bust, so take advantage and split your nines. When you have a pair of nines, your total hand value is 18. This is a relatively strong hand, but not strong enough that you can't potentially improve it by drawing another card. However, if you choose to draw another card on an 18, there is decent risk of going bust if you get a 10 value card. By splitting the nines into two hands with a value of nine each, you are now working with two hands that have a lower risk of busting if you draw another card. Specifically, if the dealer is showing a weak up card like a two, three, four, five, or six, they are likely going to have to continue taking hits to try to improve their hand. This means the dealer has a good chance of busting before they even get to 17. So by splitting your nines, you are opening up two chances to improve your hands without as much bust risk against a dealer who is probably going to bust if they have to draw. This gives you a statistical advantage over just keeping the 18 because splitting maximizes your chances of outdrawing the weak dealer. Split sevens against a two to seven. Be more aggressive with splitting sevens since the dealer is showing a weak card. When you have a pair of sevens, your total hand value is 14. This is a stiff hand that is risky to draw another card on as there is high chance of busting. By splitting the sevens into two hands with a value of seven each, you now have two hands with lower risk that can potentially be improved without going bust. When the dealer is showing a weak up card between two and seven, they have poor starting hand values and will likely need to continue taking multiple hits to try to improve. This means if you split your sevens into two hands with lower bust risk, you have a good chance of outdrawing the dealer's busted hand. Specifically against a two, three, four, five, six, or seven, the dealer is more likely than not going to go bust before they reach 17. So by splitting your sevens, you are opening up two chances to improve without busting, while the dealer has to draw to weaker hands and risk busting. 
This makes splitting the statistically aggressive move to capitalize on the dealer's weakness. Keeping the stiff 14 together would be playing passively when the situation calls for increased aggression. Rarely split fives and sixes. You'll need just the right combo to benefit. Focus on other moves. When you have a pair of fives or sixes, your starting hand totals 10 or 12 respectively. These are marginal hand values. If you split either of these pairs, you are turning one mediocre hand into two even weaker hands with values of five and six respectively. These low hand values offer very little flexibility. You will pretty much need to draw another card, and there is high risk of busting if you draw further. The only situation where splitting fives or sixes improves your odds is when the dealer is showing a very weak up card, like a two through six. In those cases, the dealer is likely to bust. However, against all other dealer up cards, you are just going from one mediocre hand to two very weak hands by splitting fives or sixes. Since the dealer showing a two to six only happens occasionally, most of the time you'll just end up with two bad hands instead of one decent hand. That's why the optimal strategy is to rarely split fives and six and instead focus on other better moves like standing, hitting, doubling down, etc. Only in those perfect situations against a dealer's very weak up card does splitting fives or sixes make mathematical sense. Never split fours, threes, or twos. It's statistically never the optimal move. Just draw additional cards. If you split any of these pairs, you are just trading one weak hand for two even weaker hands with values of four, three, and two each. Hands with such low values offer very few good options. You will almost certainly need to continue taking hits to try to improve these hands. But because the starting values are so low, there is very high risk of busting out by going over 21 if you draw further cards. Regardless of what the dealer is showing for their up card, splitting any of these pairs simply turns a bad hand into two equally bad or worse hands. Unlike fives or sixes, pairs of fours, threes, and twos just have no flexibility. Your only hope is to draw to something good, and splitting ruins that. That's why basic strategy says to never split these pairs. Just treat them as weak hands and draw cards as needed, rather than complicating things. Following these AI-recommended guidelines on when to split will immediately boost your win rate. The key is knowing which hands to split and when to avoid it based on the dealer's up card. This puts the odds in your favor in the long run. Doubling your bet can be an extremely profitable move when done at the right time. But do it recklessly, and you can hurt your bankroll. Advanced AI rigorously analyzed millions of potential scenarios to determine the ideal times to double down. Here are some easy guidelines. With 11, double against any dealer up card. Your odds of hitting 21 are very high. When you have an 11, your hand has one of the strongest starting values possible in blackjack. This is because an 11 has around a 31% chance of turning into an unbeatable 21 if you draw one more card. No other starting hand value has better odds of making 21 on the next card. Not even a soft 19 or 20 comes close. Therefore, when you have an 11, you want to maximize your bet to capitalize on the high odds of hitting 21 on the next card. Doubling your bet instantly increases your potential winnings if you do hit your likely 21. It doesn't matter what up card the dealer is showing, because your 11 has such a strong chance to become 21, regardless. Even if the dealer has an ace or 10 showing, your odds are still very favorable to double your 11 and potentially draw 21. That's why basic strategy says to always double any 11 no matter what the dealer is showing. It's simply taking advantage of the unmatched power of your starting 11. With 10, double against a dealer 2 to 9. You've got around a 50-50 chance of outdrawing them. When you have a hand total of 10, you are starting with a strong value that's unlikely to bust if you draw another card. In fact, your odds of improving your 10 into a winning hand are close to 50-50. The only ways you lose are drawing a 2-9 to nine that doesn't bust the dealer. Specifically, when the dealer is showing a weak up card between 2 and 9, they are likely going to have to continue taking hits to try to improve. This means if you double down on your strong 10, you have close to a 50% chance of outdrawing the dealer and winning the hand. Those are great odds that warrant doubling your bet to maximize potential winnings. However, 
a dealer showing 10 or ace has a strong starting hand that you are less likely to outdraw. So avoid doubling in those cases. But when the dealer is weak by showing a 2 to 9, your 10 has right around 50-50 odds to win. Doubling maximizes the profit from this advantageous situation. With 9, double against a 3 to 6 dealer. You'll likely win unless the dealer pulls 21. When you have a hand total of 9, you have a decent starting value but are unlikely to stand pat. Specifically, when the dealer is showing a 3, 4, 5, or 6, they have a weak up card that is likely going to bust if they have to continue hitting. By doubling your 9 against those weak dealer cards, you have a good chance of outdrawing the dealer and winning the hand unless they pull exactly 21. In fact, your odds of winning against a dealer 3 to 6 when doubling your 9 are better than 65%. Those are very favorable odds worth betting extra on. However, against a dealer 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, or A, your odds drop considerably because they are less likely to bust. With a soft hand ace, double with ace 6, or higher against a dealer 5 or 6. This aggressively capitalizes on your strong soft hand. A soft hand in blackjack means your hand has an ace counted as 11 points instead of 1. This gives you more flexibility since it can't bust on the next card. When you have ace 6 or a bigger soft ace hand, you are starting with a strong value of 17 or higher that is unlikely to lose outright. If the dealer is showing a 5 or 6, they have one of the weakest possible starting hands. They will very likely bust trying to hit to improve their weak up card. You have a great chance of outdrawing the likely busting dealer hand and getting paid double on your strong soft hand. But you generally want to avoid doubling soft hands below A6, as those are riskier to draw to against dealer 7 to A. Doubling on A6 or bigger specifically against dealer 5 or 6 puts the odds heavily in your favor while getting paid 2 1 on your wager. With a hard hand like 8 8, double against a dealer 5 or 6 specifically. Any other card and the odds won't be good enough. When you have a hard hand a total of 8-8, eight, eight, 16, you have a decent but not great starting hand. Drawing another card carries risk of busting. Generally, you don't want to double a hard 16. But there are exceptions when the dealer shows very weak up cards. Specifically, when the dealer is showing a 5 or 6, they have two of the worst possible starter hands in blackjack. Your odds of winning the hand are well over 50% when you double 8-8 eight, eight versus dealer 5-6. to six. Avoid doubling soft hands under A-6. The odds won't be in your favor most times. Even though these soft hands can't bust, they are likely to lose outright to stronger dealer hands if you just stand on them. The key is looking for those high-value hands where the odds shift dramatically in your favor when doubling. Following these rules will boost your win rate substantially. Doubling judiciously is where expert blackjack players really maximize profits. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown and find these tips helpful to seriously improve your odds and payouts at the tables. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the upcoming parts in this series, where we'll dive even deeper into specialized AI blackjack insights like proper bet sizing, card counting techniques, handling bonuses, and more. You won't find blackjack instruction anywhere else with this level of rigorous data and math behind it. And as always, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. I couldn't keep producing top-notch AI-powered blackjack tutorials without your likes, subscribes, and engagement. So please remember to hit those buttons to unlock the full benefits of data-driven blackjack greatness.